Hey guys, what's up, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is the January 2020 monthly prediction. So excited to be doing this video for you guys. I cannot believe it is pretty much the new year. Oh my gosh, so exciting. Anyway, if you guys are new to pick card readings, I'm gonna give you guys a quick little rundown of how it works. So basically we have pile number one, two, three, and four. So you can take a moment to pause the video if you'd like to find the pile that you're the most drawn to. Then once you're done choosing your pile, you can scroll down to the comment box or the description box to find the timestamp that's linked to your specific card. So then you can skip ahead to your personal reading. So without further ado, let's hop right into this monthly prediction. Oh, and also, some of you guys like picking with crystals. Cannot believe I almost forgot that. Let's throw some crystals on these cards to help you guys choose if you guys like to pick with some crystals. So let's go ahead and pop some crystals on these cards starting now. All right, so here are our crystal options. We have some titanium aura quartz. This is some rainbow moonstone. This is aura light 23 and this is blue tiger's eye. So take a moment, pause the video if you'd like to find the pile that you're the most drawn to. And again, once you're done choosing your pile, you can scroll down to the comment box or the description box to find the timestamp that's linked to your specific card. And then you can skip ahead to your personal reading. So without further ado, let's hop right into this January 2020 prediction starting now. All right, so pile number one, if you guys chose this pile, this is going to be your January 2020 monthly prediction. So let's find out what is in store for you guys in January of 2020, starting now. All right, so pile number one, this is what I'm seeing for you guys. So we start off with the seven of wands. We have the nine of wands, the seeker of coins or the page of pentacles, and then also the 10 of swords over here. So lots of stuff going on for you guys in the month of January. First off, these two cards really bounce off of each other a lot. This is really showing me that you guys might be um, a little bit more in the spotlight during January, the month of January. Um, it could also be that for some reason, the amount of adversity that you might have to face goes up or the amount of challenges or like differences in opinion um, with somebody in your life might rise. This can be that Maybe you have a certain trajectory or you're becoming uh, quite successful, something along the lines of this. And then there's people around you that might challenge your ideas or challenge the way that you think. Um, I do see definitely people somehow challenging your thought, your thoughts or things that you want to do or the current goals or trajectories that you have. There's some, there seems to be a little bit of like conflicting opinions that you might face at the moment that you feel like you have to overcome. This could even be that there is somebody that directly kind of is jealous of us or challenges us in a certain way um, and that we just kind of need to stand our ground and put boundaries up. The Nine of Wands really talks about being able to set certain boundaries with yourself and with other people. And so this really tells me that in the month of January, you're going to be setting certain boundaries because there might be a lot of uh, or not a lot of, but just a little bit of conflict in the beginning of the month where there's differences in opinions. So this could be with your family members or your friends or with a, a spouse or like a loved one of yours that you guys have differing opinions. And so with the Nine of Wands, this is like standing your ground and being like, hey, this is who I am. I'm setting certain boundaries of how I allow people to talk to me or how I allow, how I allow others to interact with me, that sort of thing. Or where are the lines and boundaries that I do not allow people to cross and where do I actually allow them to cross? And then we also do have the page of pentacles over here, the seeker of coins. And this is really telling me that there could be like a new hobby or a new idea or a new passion of interest for you guys during the month of January. And so this could be a big goal of your guys's that you are like, okay, I'm finally going to go put this into the planning stages and find out how I can manifest this and how I can put my dream to get it like started, get it like on the road basically is like what I'm, the word that I'm trying to look for, getting it started. And so I feel like you guys have this like string of ideas as you can see on this card right here. There's basically like this, you're, you're holding up all of these different ideas that are kind of like stringed together. And this is telling me that you guys are planning for something about how to manifest a specific goal. And so it could be that you guys are desiring to start a certain business, learn some more about a certain thing, do some sort of creative project, start a creative venture. You guys have something physically planned in this world that you guys are wanting to bring to fruition. And so, you guys are planning out how to exactly go about doing that and what the right trajectory and what the, right, what the correct plan is. When we end off with the Ten of Swords, though, I do want to mention that this card really talks about um, 
uh, basically feeling a little bit defeated. And so it could be that um, the adversity that we face with other people and their opinions that are kind of coming through makes us feel a little bit down or makes us feel a little bit sad or makes us feel a little bit hurt or makes us feel doubtful, things like that. So this is finally challenging the, the doubts that you guys might have about a certain goal that you're really wanting to reach and finally gaining up that self-confidence, setting the proper boundaries so that people can no longer um, hurt you in a way or talk to you in a certain way that doesn't really resonate with you anymore. So this is finally setting those specific boundaries. This could also be that we're going through a bit of a loss and we're, you know, trying to stay on top of it, trying to change our focus a little bit. But I do see a little bit of, you know, being a little bit run down by the end of the month where either it's like your own doubts are catching up to you or other people's doubts are kind of like really getting to you or the opinions of others are getting to you. And it's finally time for that to change. And I feel like you guys are going to be changing that when we um, have the page of pentacles over here. So I feel like you guys are again stringing together sort of an idea about what you guys actually want to do and how you're going to bring about those manifestations. And so I feel like all of this, all the adversity, all of the differing opinions that are around you are actually going to push you in a very particular direction that help you figure out how you're going to manifest your specific goals. And it might um, bring a lot of motivation. At first, I feel like it's going to possibly make you feel a bit defeated about your current goals, but I do feel like they will persevere as long as you set those proper boundaries with the Nine of Wands. This is about setting proper boundaries of how people are allowed to talk to you, how people are allowed to interact with you, the uh, current opinions that they might have, setting boundaries and being like, no, I can do this. And you being able to really stand up for yourself. This is really about standing up for yourself and building the confidence to do that. And then we also do have the card here of Chaos and Conflict, which fits here perfectly. And then we have the Yang card, which is the Masculine. So the Masculine is all about doing. And so this is perfect for like manifestation, all that kind of stuff, because this is really telling me that you guys, through the Chaos and Conflict, I feel like you will gain a lot of confidence and a lot of strength in order to persevere and push your dreams towards becoming reality. So this chaos and conflict, again, is kind of like the interactions that you might be having with other people. Could also be your own self-doubts kind of coming through about a certain thing that you guys are wanting to create, a certain thing that you guys are wanting to manifest, and really coming face to face with those deeper fears that you might have and then also gaining a lot of this masculine energy over here with Yang and realizing that you guys can make it happen. As you can see in the palm of his hands, he has this like, like burst of energy, this fiery energy, which is that masculine Mars type of warrior energy. And this is the warrior type of energy that I see in the wand cards right here, especially the nine of wands since he is a warrior and the seven of wands since he also is kind of a warrior in that card as well. So I see you guys bringing in a lot of masculine energy. And all that I mean by masculine energy, um, Basically, you can be a male or a female and listen to this reading and it's totally fine. It'll completely apply to you. We all have masculine and feminine energy within us, no matter what our sex or orientation is. But I feel like for anyone who picked this pile, you're bringing in the more masculine energy, which is the energy of confidence, the energy of action, taking action on your ideas. The feminine energy is more of the cultivating the energy and um, cultivating the hows and the more inner work of manifestation, whereas yang in the masculine energy is the outer work of the manifestation where we finally take that action, we finally push forward, we set certain boundaries, we make things very clear, cut and dry, and we bring the manifestation into fruition with this, this inspiration, with this passion, with this motivation. So I do see that happening for you guys in the month of January. And then our next two cards that we have is the trust card. I think I'm going to put this on this side. We have trust over here, and then we have nature. And so with these two cards, with this trust card, I really feel like, again, this is a, a big manifestation process for you guys. Since we do have these butterflies on this card, I'll just hold this up for you guys. So with this card, um, there's those two butterflies up there. And this is showing me that you guys are going to go through quite a big transformation um, in the month of January. And this is about blossoming. This is hugely about blossoming and then flying towards your specific goals. And the crystal in the middle here shows me that this is more of a material kind of like manifestation that you guys will be bringing in. And so 
whatever you guys have your set have your eyes set on materially um, especially because I believe that we had yeah the page of uh, Pentacles which is the physical so this could be starting a business, gaining more money, um, doing something that's physically tangible, gaining certain items, certain a certain job, for example, um, something physical. Whatever you guys are trying to manifest, I do see this blossoming and you being able to start your journey on flying there. And I mean that as a metaphor, like starting your journey on flying there uh, during the month of January. And then over here we have the nature card. And so what this one's telling me, this acorn is kind of like this idea that you guys have. And again, these birds, there's a lot of like wings happening over here. And so this really shows me that you guys are really going to be um, like really manifesting and being able to kind of take flight towards your specific goals that you want. The um, nature in general, and I do want to say the trust card, the, the trust is like being able to know and have faith in yourself. I do want to point that out. This is about having faith in yourself. And then the nature card over here, this is like really getting and planting your roots. Whenever I see nature, this reminds me about planting roots and being able to say, okay, this is what I want. This is where I'm, what I'm going towards. This is what I'm deciding to manifest and not taking no for an answer. And you get, and you basically decide with this card to plant your roots and be like, this is what I'm manifesting. And that's what I am going towards. And when you plant those roots, it's like saying like this, this is what I'm doing. And you're basically dedicating yourself towards it. So I do see you guys dedicating yourself towards something um, during the month of January that you guys are trying to manifest. And then our last three cards here, we do have the calmness card. And then we also have the passion card. And then we have the victory card. So this is great. So I want to mention with these cards, this calmness, this is about like, again, trusting, being calm. I do see you guys going through and learning how to trust in your passions and your desires and your manifestation and learning the more spiritual aspects of, um, of this. And then we do also have the passion card over here. So again, this is really starting to follow your passion, but trusting in it so much to where you don't have this like worry anymore. You let go of the worry and you just have calmness about it because you know that, that, that it's coming. You've already planted the roots of your passion and you know that it's coming and that's what's gonna lead you towards victory in the month of January. So I, I feel like you guys are gonna really step into um, deciding on what you guys are wanting to attract or what you guys are wanting to manifest into your life and I feel like that's really going to begin to happen for you guys. So let's do the Astro Dice to find out anything else that we have. So we have Saturn, we have Sagittarius, and then we have the sixth house. So the sixth house is ruled by Virgo. And so this talks about our health. This talks about um, our desires and work. This talks about healing ourselves, healing other people. And so with this card, or with this uh, uh, dice coming up here with the sixth house. This is like kind of talking about um, our work and our dedication, our organizational abilities, our traje trajectories, being able to be a little bit of a perfectionist as well since it is ruled by Virgo. This is talking about maybe we are a little bit hard on ourselves with our need for perfection in certain things. Um, and you guys might be quite harsh with yourselves and quite strict since we have Saturn. So Saturn is quite strict. And when it's paired with the sixth house of Virgo over here, this is talking about that we can tend to be quite, or we, we, um, we don't really move forward with our passion because we're, we're such a perfectionist that we don't ever feel like just letting it go. And so the advice here is of Sagittarius right here, since we have the Sagittarius um, dice right there, this is encouraging you and saying the solution to this is being able to just let it go. Because Sagittarius, they're able to just let things go. They're able to just go with the flow and trust the process. They're all about like really trusting and being able to just flow and being able to just go and let go. So I think for you guys, the most important thing is being able to reach that calm state instead of needing to be such a perfectionist or pin down on everything and having needing to have it all figured out. It's time to just let it go and go with the flow. Sagittarius goes with the flow. They go with the wind, wherever the wind takes them and they just, they just follow passion. They just follow their passion and they're able to just let it go and just do, let go of the need for perfection 
everything's all perfect the way it is. So that is what I'm seeing for you guys, pile number one for the month of January. I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a really big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. All right, so pile number two, if you guys chose this pile, this is gonna be your January of 2020 prediction video. So let's hop right into this reading and find out what is in store for you guys, starting now. All right, so pile number two, this is what I am seeing for you guys. So we start off here with the ruler of wands, which is basically the king of wands. Then we have the ten of cups, seven of cups, three of cups, and then the five of wands. So um, oddly, you guys have an extra tarot card here. I was only picking four tarot cards for this reading, but you guys have an extra one. So that's pretty special to begin with. Also, I do want to point out that we have so many cup cards over here. This is just wild there's like so many cups we have ten of cups seven of cups and then three of cups just all in a row and that's kind of rare so let's hop right into what this means I see a lot of good things here which is amazing this is great so with the ruler of wands the king of wands here in the beginning I want to point out that this is really giving me the feeling like there's going to be this huge passion really taking you over in the month of January. And so I really feel like there's going to be this burst of energy, this burst of creativity, um, the, this burst of ideas, motivation, passion. I feel like there's gonna be so many ideas coming to you in the month of January of either what to do with your business or creatively, passionately, um, with your hobbies, kind of just all around the board. I feel like there's going to be this intense passion and creativity um, and uh, like this this motivation and this drive to just get stuff done. And then also with the Ten of Cups, I'm seeing that the month of January is going to be quite fulfilling for you guys. I really feel like you guys are going to be getting a lot of stuff done, but it's also going to feel like it's fulfilling in all areas of your life. And I feel like that's what's going to ignite the spark of this passion because it seems like everything's just falling into place for you guys. The Ten of Cups is really showing me that even with family life, things are going to be great. There's going to be this great balance in front of you. Um, and again, just great, an overpouring of great emotions, creativity, all that kind of stuff. And then also with the Seven of Cups here, this can also mean that we have so many ideas in front of us. So in the month of January, I feel like you're going to be just bursting with ideas in front of you about what you can be doing, the, the places that you guys want to go, the things that you guys want to manifest, what you guys want to create. I feel like there's going to be so many ideas and you guys are going to be scouting them all and wanting to kind of throw them all on your plate all at once and um and i feel like that's what's going to be this good burst of energy but it can also be sometimes that there might be points of the month where you guys are a little bit overwhelmed with all of the different things that you guys are trying to do to the point where it can get a little bit conflicting with this five of wands energy right here so this is probably why the five of wands needed to come up in this reading is because um Without the Five of Wands, this would be all like good and roses, even though it still is with the Five of Wands. I do want to point out that it still is great. Um, but this comes up to show that, you know, there could be a little bit of conflict happening a little bit in the month where it's like, do I really have time for that? Or do I have time for all of these things? Or like, what can I let go? Or do they all fit together as one? How can I get them all done at the same time? Uh, which one should I do first? Which one should I put more of my energy towards to complete first off, second off, whatever, all this kind of stuff. So there, I feel like there's a little bit of conflicting energy here about what to prioritize, what to put first. There's just so many ideas coming through. And um, we do also have the Three of Cups here. So this can also be that the people that we're talking to might throw in all of their different ideas and we're kind of just like, eh, I'm just going to stick to what, what I got going on or whatever. I feel like there might be like some unsolicited advice, unsolicited, like, um, ideas that are coming your way, <laughs> but I think it's all good. I, I don't think that's going to really bother you guys too much, but I do see a little bit of that. Um, and then also with the three of cups over here, this is really showing me that, you know, it's going to be a great time to celebrate as well. I feel like there's going to be so many reasons to celebrate. I feel like there's going to be so many reasons to reward yourself. And I do feel like you guys will be rewarding yourself. I do see you guys going out for lots of like lunches or dinners or drinks with friends, hanging out with friends type of thing, really seeing them a lot. Um, and feeling like super creative because of it. I feel like there's just this huge creative energy where everything just feels all good. Again, there's a couple of different like ideas that you might disagree on or you might be trying to figure out how to mend all of these ideas together and how to like have them coincide with each other so that they can all come to fruition at once. So I'm seeing just a lot of different energy, but again, this is just a really creative energy. So I, I honestly feel like really good about this and it doesn't feel negative at all. It just feels like there's so many good things happening right now. And then we also have the revolutionary over here. And then we also have higher perspective. 
And so this is really interesting because if we look at the King of Wands card right here, this is the exact same staff with flames as this card, the Revolutionary over here on this side. And so this is really telling me that there's something really significant with this wand energy. And again, this is like really igniting that spark. And so I feel like you guys are going to with this card coming up, I feel like you guys are going to be able to sort out the wand energy that's happening over here with the trying to figure out how these coincide, trying to figure out how these really work. I feel like you guys are going to come across revolutions to your to any problems that kind of arise. So I don't see anything being stuck for too long. I see a lot of solutions kind of really coming to you quite simply and quite easily. And then we also do have higher perspectives. So again, I feel like you guys are kind of taking the high road over here. I really see you guys are growing again, like planting those roots because we have this tree over here. You guys are really planting yourselves and, and dedicating yourself to something quite specific so that you can grow um, basically a whole, a whole empire of this like creativity that you really have like growing and flowing at the moment. And then of course, of course we have the card of higher power with the higher perspective cards. I, I love when tarot does this and they kind of just like bounce off of each other so well. I love that. And then we do also have the mending card. So this is quite important. So I do feel like, so for a lot of you guys with this mending card immediately, I'm getting the vibes that maybe you guys um, have a certain ex or a friend from a really long time ago that's coming back into your life. So it could be somebody that you haven't talked to in a little while now is going to be kind of knocking on your door, wanting to mend something or wanting to come back in your life. So immediately I'm feeling a little bit of that energy over here. But then again, I also feel like this is utilizing your creative energy as well and kind of just like mending or like putting your dreams together because you might have a lot of different ideas and I feel like you guys are going to be somehow sewing them all together so that they work with each other. And then we also do have this higher power. And so this is like the higher perspective card. And I feel like you guys are going to be um, having almost a little bit of a spiritual awakening as well. So you guys may be going through another spiritual awakening um, if you guys have already had one, or maybe you're going to go on your first kind of spiritual awakening. Um, and then also with these, again, I'm feeling, again, planting your roots and being able to grow really high. There's a, there's a high energy here. There's a high vibe energy. Um, and I feel like you guys are growing quite quickly. So somehow whatever you guys are creating whatever you guys are cultivating there's a lot of energy here and i feel like it's getting quite creative for you and it's going to be a really really good time and then we also have the nature card over here and then we have the sobriety card and then our last card that we have over here is the energy card wow this i just want to say that the colors of all these cards really match each other in this reading and it's it's making me feel real nice right now. <laughs> All right, so with the nature card, this reminds me a lot of our higher power card or higher perspective card with the tree um, because this is really telling me again that you're planting those roots because in this card we did have the root planting kind of happening there and that always tells me that you guys are dedicating yourselves to something. You're really planting your roots into something. You're really getting those creative juices flowing and it's manifesting for you. Whenever you plant seeds, they do grow. And so right now in the month of January, where you guys are planting certain seeds, you're planting all of your different ideas, you're mending them all together, you're, you're creating them. This is really talking about the, the sense of creation as well. You're creating these things that are going to then grow and prosper in your future. And then also with the sobriety card, I feel like you guys are almost taking a break from normal life, um, or not even necessarily normal life, but maybe just taking a break from your regular routine or anything like that, and you guys are kind of... Um, you're almost focusing on something completely different at the moment. So I feel like you guys, you're, you're changing your energy focus and you're changing it towards the creative side. And I feel like um, with this, again, you might be getting rid of things that no longer serve you. I feel like you guys are getting that higher perspective because this is uh, ruled by amethyst and amethyst is always talks about that higher power the higher perspective i do feel like you guys will have this conscious awakening where it feels like you your mind is just tapping into all these different creative ideas and i feel like it's going to boost you in energy i feel like you're going to feel like so driven and so motivated and you're just gonna have so much energy and i feel like when you wake up in the morning there's just this spark of energy where it's like oh, i can't sleep because i'm just so excited to get back to what i'm doing and so I'm feeling a lot of that kind of energy for you guys, pile number two. And let's see what the Astro Dice have to say and add on to this. All right, so we have the 12th house. We have Venus and we have Libra. 
So Venus is very creative. 12th house is very creative. So 12th house is ruled by Pisces. Um, and then Venus is ruled by Taurus and by Libra. And then we also do have Libra over here. So this is talking about a huge creative energy. I do feel for a lot of you guys, you might be um, also doing something creative with yourself. I feel like you guys might buy yourself new new clothes or you might change up your style a little bit when we have Venus over here. This is about kind of like really wanting to take the time and the effort to be really creative. And this might have something to do with um, making yourself look a certain way every day or taking time to be beautiful or whatever. There's even beauty in being natural and all of that kind of stuff. But I feel like you're gonna somehow exude this this massive amount of creative energy and I think people are going to notice that off of you and they're going to see you kind of shine with this beautiful essence basically and especially when we have Libra as well because Libra they love taking their time to look their best be their best they exude that wonderful like romantic magnetic energy and I feel like you guys are going to be really cultivating a lot of that in the month of January you guys might also be really focused on what you guys eat or how you guys look or you might change something up in the new year where you guys kind of almost redecorate yourself is the word that I want to use is like redecorating yourself and then with this 12th house over here this is really connecting to that higher power connecting to your higher self going through kind of almost a spiritual awakening or maybe even connecting and becoming your higher self and bringing that higher self into the actuality of who you are and being able to cultivate that energy, that really high power creative energy and like channel it through you in the most creative, abundant ways. And so that is what I'm seeing for you guys. Pile number two, hope you guys enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a really big thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. All right, so pile number three, if you guys chose this pile, this is going to be your January 2020 monthly prediction. So without further ado, let's hop right into this and see what is in store for you guys starting now. All right, so pile number three, this is what I'm seeing for you guys. So we start off with the temperance, then we have the seven of pentacles or coins in this case, and then we have the two of cups, and then we have the hermit over here. So this is a interesting month for you guys. So with, um, first off, I want to talk about the seven of pentacles over here. So this is usually when we, we're manifesting something and it's in the cultivation stage. And so we've been waiting for something to come around for a little while. Um, we might have planned it some time ago when we have the temperance over here. This can mean that we still have a journey ahead of us in order to get to where we wanna go, but we have this idea and we're just waiting for this. We're waiting for the right time or we're waiting for the right opportunity for something to come about. Um, and also with the two of cups over here, this is really telling me that Either you guys are in a relationship and you're currently kind of distracted by that relationship and you're letting that relationship distract you from what you truly need to be doing for yourself and to attain your current goals, but you might be letting yourself get a little bit too distracted by a current relationship that you guys are in, or it could mean that, um, or it could even mean your friends as well. Either your friends are too distracting to you or your specific partner's too distracting to you and you keep giving them all of your time. Or it could mean that somebody's even coming in in the month of January. If you guys are single, this is somebody coming in where it's, it's either a friendship or a person that might be a little bit distracting to you um, and kind of pulls you away from what you're truly supposed to be working towards and what you truly want to be working towards. And the hermit here is telling me that I feel like you guys are going to... Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like almost taking a break from your goals for a little bit with that hermit and, you know, instead focusing on your friendships or on your current relationship or somebody that's coming into your life. And again, it's kind of like going on that recluse where we end up taking a little bit of like a, a side path and we get off course a little bit. Um, we take an alternate road in order to experience something a little bit different for a little while. And so I feel like you guys are almost taking an alternate road and instead choosing to experience relationships, friendships, stuff like that, celebration with somebody, and human connection, deep human connection, rather than focusing on towards your goals. But I do feel like, again, somebody's kind of coming in, or at least this relationship or connection is getting even stronger to the point where you might forget about your goals and they might feel a little bit distant for a little while. You might feel a little bit distant from, distant from yourself even, because I feel like, um, again, you guys are kind of almost putting yourselves off for a certain relationship and you might feel at a distance from yourself because of that. You might feel like you've lost a little bit of your sense or a lot, a lost a little bit of yourself um, by doing this. 
So again, yeah, the hermit just being at the end here talks about taking that alternate path. And then we have the seeker card over here. And then we also have withdraw. And so withdraw fits in so perfectly with the hermit card that we have. I love when tarot plays off of each other like this and it seems to do this in almost every reading, but it still shocks me every single time because it's just, what a coincidence, right? And there's no such thing as coincidences, but it's still such a coincidence. So withdraw is, again, telling me that you guys are going through this hermit stage of withdrawing from who you truly are, the, your current goals, the things that you want to manifest, you're withdrawing in order to experience relationship. So this can either come out again in the form of friendship or in the form of actual loving partnership. The seeker over here tells me that you guys still have things that you want to create. I feel like you still have this energy that wants to pull you towards, you know, certain goals and certain things, but you're going through this withdrawal period in order to experience relationships instead or, or in order to build a certain relationship that you guys are then going to come back and then be able to seek. So I do feel like, you know, for some of you guys, by the end of the month, I feel like you're going to be able to get back on track with who you are. And then for others, I feel like, again, it's still in that withdrawal stage where you guys are currently thinking about, you know, what you want to do. But again, the distraction, you guys are on like a completely different, you guys have chosen to be on a different path than on the path of your goals at the moment, just because um, this seems to call to you more at, the t at this time is relationships and love and stuff like that. So I do feel like you guys are being pulled a little bit more in that direction, but I do feel like you guys are still picking up bits and pieces here and there with the seeker card. As we can see, there is this, um, there's these hands and she is basically, you know, kind of reaching out towards the falling little kind of objects and stuff like that. And in this one, it is depicted as like teeth and something else it looks like teeth and something else. So Teeth usually are our self-worth, things like that. They're, they're the bones, they're ruled by Saturn. And so this can, this can be indicating that um, we're really losing our core and we're picking up little bits and pieces of it on the way and we're allowing for little bits and pieces of it on the way, but we're not really being our full true core self because we're taking a little bit of a detour in order to experience love and relationships instead. But we're still, you know, we're still on the bread trail. We're still on that little crumb trail of heading in that direction to be able to find our dreams and stuff like that. But there's a little bit of a detour, but we're still following the breadcrumbs to get to where we want to go. So I don't want you to feel like all hope is lost. Again, there's a little bit of withdrawal from your goals, but they're still happening. You're still on the breadcrumb trail. There's a little trail that you guys need to follow. And I feel like this is actually important in leading you somewhere as like learning some certain lessons from these specific relationships. So again, you still, you're still on the breadcrumb trail. So don't worry too much when you hear all this. And then our next cards, we do have the thinker card over here and then we have breathe. And so I feel like you guys might overthink at times when we have this thinker card. I'm really getting that you guys, oh, and there's the number 44. This keeps coming up today, the number 44 in like the couple readings that I've been filming today. But with this card, I do want to say that you guys might be overthinking certain things. I do feel like you guys are on the breadcrumb trail of getting towards your goals. But you guys might be overthinking sometimes where you feel like really lost or you feel like really withdrawn from yourself. But I feel like this is important. This is going to teach you something much deeper. And so I feel like you guys are just supposed to accept it and allow it when we have this breathe card. You're just supposed to allow this energy in don't think too much, but allow it to create growth for you. Breathe through it, see it, experience it. This is being brought to you right now in order for you to be able to experience it. So don't overthink it. Don't overanalyze it too much. Just keep following that breadcrumb trail and see what this is truly teaching you on the deeper aspect of things and just be able to calmly make your way through it. Then our next card, we have artistry. And then we have emotional purity over here. And then we have the study card. So with thinker and study, you guys might be learning some new things in the month of January, but I do feel like it's mostly coming from this relationship thing. Um, but it could also be indicating that you guys are in school for something, or you guys are going to be taking a certain course on something, or you guys might be really diving deep into studying something that you're really passionate about. Um, but with this, I do want to say that I'm mostly getting the vibes that you guys are truly learning something a lot deeper. And so I feel like you guys, you should use this time to calmly allow this, this new energy in, even though it might make you feel really disconnected from yourself and your truer goals. I feel like you're supposed to utilize this time to 
observe and experience this new experience. I feel like it's going to be, you're going to learn some newer things if you take the time to think, breathe, calmly observe. And then we also do have this artistry card over here. So I do feel like you're going to have this inspiration near the end of the month of this creativity. So I do feel like your creativity is coming back and it's not going to be all lost in a relationship or anything like that. I do feel like this creative energy is going to be coming back and I feel like you guys are going to be able to put your time and efforts towards that during the end of the month, but definitely the beginning of the month, it's looking like the most of the focus is on relationships. And then with this emotional purity card, I feel like this is really being able to observe from the outside. And I feel like your creativity is actually going to be boosted by this certain relationship. And so again, purify those emotions, but again, just observe them. I do feel like for some of you guys, this will bring you lots of ins uh, inspiration into your life. But then again, for some of you, I feel like you need to get back to your own core emotions in order to feel yourself again and allow the distinction between yourself and your relationship instead of letting your lives just completely meld together into a blah, into its own one puddle. You should still be separate puddles that just, you know, love each other. They get along, but they don't exactly just completely overlap one another to the point where they lose who they they truly are and the distinction between the two. So again, emotionally purify yourself, observe what you're going through, be able to disconnect once in a while so that you can return to your own self and your own goals and still create that and still follow that breadcrumb trail and not completely lose yourself. And let's see what the Astro Dice have to say about this. So we have the first house, we have the North Node and we have Cancer. So this this is great to come up right now because the first house talks about the self. What do you desire? I think the month of January for you guys is finding out and rediscovering yourself again, even if you might be in relationships or even if your friends might be distracting at times, realizing your own distinction between yourself, emotionally purify yourself so that you're not always caught up emotionally with other people because sometimes our emotions can get clouded by the people that we're surrounded by. Sometimes we can take on the emotions of the people that we're surrounded by and we don't really know why we're feeling a certain way, but it could be that we're just picking up on too many emotions from that other person and it feels so foreign to us that we end up kind of losing ourselves. We end up overthinking a lot of things. We end up having to analyze a lot of things because we can't really decipher anymore the distinction between ourselves and the other person because we start molding into that other person. So with this first house over here, this is talking about get back to your own goals, focus on you, decipher who you are by being a little bit alone. So this hermit is really coming into play here when um, and the withdrawal. So the hermit and the withdrawal is really coming in because it's time for you to take some time on your own as well, especially during the end of the month because I feel like you guys are going to realize this throughout the month and then finally by the end of it, I feel like you guys are going to be like, okay, it's time for me to withdraw completely from everything in order to refine yourself, find your current destiny, your current goals, and start to strive towards those, start to build towards those. And again, the cancer is kind of playing off the emotional purity card that we have over there because this is talking about deciphering between your own emotions and other people's emotions to be able to understand where yours actually are and what emotions actually belong to you and which ones you've picked up from other people. So that's what I'm seeing for you guys, pile number three. Hope you guys enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a really big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you guys haven't already, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. All right, so my last pile, pile number four. This is going to be your January 2020 prediction. So if you guys are interested in finding out what's happening for you guys in January in that whole month, let's find out starting now. All right, so pile number four, this is what I'm seeing for you guys. So we start off with the Ace of Wands, then we have the Hanged One, which is basically the Hanged Man, and then we have the Hero Fint, and then the Nine of Cups over here. So what I'm seeing for you guys in the month of January, I do see this huge spark going off, this like, this realization, this is this awakening, this light bulb going off in your head with this Ace of Wands card. This is really showing me that you guys are gonna get this like huge inspiration um, during the month of January, and I feel like it's going to like, really enlighten you up and inspire you and motivate you. And so I feel like there's this idea or this this new like way of life that you guys might have. Maybe you guys have certain New Year's resolutions that you really want to um, take place. And so I feel like there's going to be this whole new like this rebirth where you guys are just like, I'm going to change up so many things about my life and therefore things are going to go really good. But I feel like once the new year actually begins, and so the month of January, so with this this hangman card with the hanged one over here, this is like telling me that 
you guys might have, an, have a tendency to be desired to fall back into old habits or you might feel very stagnant where you don't want to fall back into old habits but bringing yourself to become the new version of you that you're creating. Maybe there's a little bit of hesitation or um, so you might feel a bit stagnant or a little bit stuck or it could be that you know you felt like restricted or held back because you're scared of what other people are going to think when we have this Hierophant card. So there's something that's stopping you guys from actually following through with your goals because there's this sense where you guys are worried about what other people are going to think about you. So the Hierophant's really telling me that there is like, there's a key to be unlocked here. If you guys want to get unstagnant, these keys here hold this huge purpose because as you can see that there is keys kind of at the bottom of this card. And so this is telling me that the key to unlocking your future in order to become the person that you're trying to become or allow your goals to really take you to the places that you're wanting to go is by not allowing society to tell you how to be or not fearing the thoughts or judgments of other people or what spirit might think of you or anything around the lines of this or even what you're even the just thoughts that are in your head about this so i'm feeling like for you guys, this is about self-worth, owning that kind of stuff. Again, we have a tooth right here. And teeth, um, for some reason, whenever I look into certain dreams, I don't know why I'm being like guided to talk about dreams right now, but um, I, I've always like viewed, if, for example, if you ever have dreams about like cr cracking, chipping teeth, losing teeth or anything like that, that's always issues with self-worth. And so anytime I see teeth that are on certain cards, I always think about self-worth. And so this is about realizing that it doesn't matter what other people think of you. It only matters what you think of you. And that's what the tooth is really kind of like resembling for me right now. And that's the key in order to really moving yourself forward in the month of January is to be able to realize that your definition of yourself is the only one that actually matters. And through that, I feel like you're going to unlock the door because then we have the nine of cups over here. And so this is talking about the whole fulfillment, attaining those wishes that you that you have, being able to take that spark, take that inspiration, and turn it into the things that you've been wanting and gaining those wishes. And so that is the key to unlocking that for you guys in the month of January. And I feel like January is going to be that self-development kind of month for you guys where you're building up that confidence, that self-worth, and realizing that your definition is the only definition that actually matters, however you decide to define yourself. And then our next cards over here, we have the Outlaw, and then we also have Ascension. And so with this Outlaw card over here, this is really telling me that maybe you guys are doing something that's maybe really off the beaten path of what other people expect of you, or maybe it's off the beaten path of like what um, society says you should be or what you should be doing. Maybe you guys are a really big dreamer. Again, the tooth is reminding me of dreams. Maybe you guys have really big dreams ahead of yourselves. Um, and so you're feeling a little bit like the only one kind of like the lone wolf the outlaw is like kind of like the lone wolf maybe you guys are feeling like the lone wolf because you realize that you're kind of like an, an individual who is taking the high road with this ascension you guys are taking the high road but you're pretty much the only one walking there and everyone else might be looking at you or judging you being like is that really realistic because you guys are following your dreams and you guys are really desiring to follow your dreams but the key is to just realize that you can do it and stop fearing the judgment, stop fearing the thoughts of other people, stop fearing the opinions of other people. That is the key to doing this. And then with this Ascension card over here, I feel like you guys are going to be able to grow past all this. So I feel like the month of January is about you getting past all this and ascending and growing into your dreams, growing into what you actually want to be, growing into your own definition of yourself where you can have that strong tooth. It's like fine. It's not chipped at all. It is Gucci. Um, and that's, why did I just say Gucci? I don't know. A lot of people use that word. It, it, uh, it's like one of those slang terms. I'm like really, I don't know. I'm judging myself so hard for using the word Gucci just now. Anyway, um, just this is a perfect example. Stop judging yourself. If you guys say the word Gucci, and it's crazy slang term that some people use. It is fine. The only opinion that matters is the opinion that you have about it. So this is a perfect example to come up right now. Anyway, um, so the ascension is basically you growing past the limiting beliefs that you might have or the limiting beliefs of other people and being able to ascend past those and just be able to believe in yourself and believe in your dreams. So that is what this is pointing towards. And then our next couple cards here 
are the poised and then truth be told. So I feel like this is about you holding yourself in the position that you desire to be in. The poised card is really reminding me of that because as we can see, she's posed very, very beautifully over here. Um, and I apologize for all the engine noise, but anyway, she's, she's poised very beautifully on this card. She knows what she wants. There's a lot of confidence in this photo. There's a lot of confidence happening in this card. And so I want to point out that this is really showing me that, um, the thing that really matters is being able to hold yourself in the light that you want to be seen in. And so that's the only thing that actually truly matters is being able to, um, again, put your own definition towards yourself. Who are you? What are you worth? And allow that to be your only definition of self. And then that way you're poised into this beautiful, and everyone sees you as somebody who's already attained their dreams. Everyone sees you as this person who is, who holds that energy so well, because at the moment, the self doubt that you might have, or the fact that you currently define yourself based on other people will show in your body language and everything. And so people won't even take you seriously. But then once you decide to redefine yourself, you give yourself a new definition and you own that definition to the point where it changes, you know, the way you walk, the way you talk, everything about that, people will begin to take you more seriously because you just hold yourself in that light and you being able to hold yourself in that light is all that you need. And then we also do have the truth be told card. So I feel like this is again, kind of about setting yourself free since we have this window that's opening with all of these flowers just like blooming out of here. So this is talking about the fact that um, you guys are kind of just opening this window. You're opening this door of opportunity once you guys hold yourself in this position, you, once you guys hold yourself in this light, no one can take that away from you. And I feel like, again, that'll just open up a window of opportunity, a window of change. This is vast change, like just coming and zooming, racing into your life, basically, that I see happening over here once you guys decide to take on that, that change. And so I feel like the month of January is all about that for you guys. And then we have the green, uh, the green jade card, which is meaningful dreams. Okay. Wow. <laughs> we have the dream card. Of course we have the dream card. I'm talking about dreams this whole time. So, um, meaningful dreams. You guys might notice that your dreams are really speaking to you. So I'd really look at your dreams in a metaphorical point of view to see what they're talking about. Also with this card, I do want to reiterate it that this is kind of bouncing off of this card. Again, the green of this card almost looks like it's leaking into this card. So this is really showing me that, um, these two cards are very connected. I'm feeling like a huge connection over here. So this is whatever you, the, the meaning that you give your dreams is what will poise you into unlocking and opening up that window of opportunity. So meaningful dreams. What is the meaning you give your dreams? And I mean this like as in your goals, your dreams as in your goals, meaningful dreams. What is the meaning that you give them? That is what's going to give you this confidence. That is what's going to give you this spark, this ignition to start and begin those dreams instead of just holding and waiting for the right moment. This is the right moment. You just need to become that and own that. And then we also have the inner child over here. So this is about really talking towards your inner child and, and being like, okay, yes, we have these dreams and we're gonna make them happen. And re redefining yourself redefining that inner child that might say that oh these dreams are just me being a kid and me daydreaming no this is you now i feel like this is really connecting to what you desire what you truly desire and realizing that you can make that happen and then we oh of course we end on the success card yes <laughs> all right so again this green playing off of each other this is connecting to your heart chakra what you truly truly want what you truly desire. And so through this, with this success card, I do feel like you guys are going to reach this point of feeling successful already by the end of January, by just owning this new energy, um, giving yourself a new definition. And I feel like that is what's going to lead you towards that success. And I feel like January is all about figuring that out and figuring out what that new definition of self is. And let's do some Astro Dice to find some more information on this. Ooh, we have Jupiter. We have Libra, and then we have the 11th house. And so you guys might have some really big dreams when we have the 11th house over here. And then with Jupiter, this is all about expansion. And Libra, this is kind of talking about our balance, the way that we hold ourselves, the way that we poise ourselves, um, the weighing out the details and being fair and realizing that you can do this. 
um, and being really logical with yourself. The 11th house talks about, you know, yes, these dreams are big. They might be worldly dreams. And this is about really expanding those, those dreams and making our definition for ourselves. Libra is also about making your own definition for yourself. And once you put your mind towards something, that's going to be what it is. So I feel like this is all about redefining yourself, expanding oneself. Um, this can also be talking about the, the people that we have in our lives. This can also be really um, reiterating those certain relationships and kind of like expanding those as well because Libra and the 11th house both deal with relationships as well. So uh, the 11th house is ruled by Aquarius and Jupiter is ruled by Sagittarius and Pisces. And so this is talking about, um, again, our dreams, expanding those dreams massively, um, realizing that other people also do play a part in it, but we are the ones that give that definition. I do want to reiterate that. Also holding yourself in a beautiful light um, and being able to be creative, expan expansion through creativity. And then with that 11th house, being able to not even care what other people think. Libras usually don't really care what people think. I do want to say, of course they do on a certain level. I think everyone does on a certain level, but Libras are one of those signs that's like, I'm going to be like badass no matter what type of thing. And this is about really not caring what people think. The 11th house is ruled by Aquarius. Is, and Aquarius is, let me tell you, are another sign that doesn't give a crap what people think about them because they're always like so different. They're the odd one out. And so even though you guys might be a little bit of that outlaw type of energy that we have over here, I feel like being able to stand alone will give you that success that you desire. I don't feel like you're on a path that everyone else is on. And that's totally fine. That's totally okay. That's totally Gucci. <laughs> you might not be on a, uh, on a path that everyone else is on, but that's fine. You might be the lone wolf, but it's because you're going through, going towards such big dreams that yeah, not everyone goes towards. Not everyone has this energy that this belief that they can do it. And so most people don't. So you might be alone on it, but it's totally fine. Go make it happen anyway. It doesn't matter. The only people that ever do something great are the people that do things that are unorthodox or out of the box. That's why it ends up being great is because no one else has usually done it before. If everyone else has done it, it's just a normal thing. It's never something great. Something great always comes from people who, you know, sometimes are a little bit of a lone wolf for a little while. So I feel like that might be you guys for a little bit. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a really big thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button down below if you guys haven't already. And I'll see you guys in my next video.